you are good for me in a way that's different from any other good I've ever had. I used to think other men were good in the way that candy and soda are good, but they gave me a stomach ache and filled my mouth with cavities. So I had my sweet tooth extracted to make space for my wisdom teeth to come in. And now I'm craving pure spiritual milk so that by it I might grow up and lose my baby teeth that have kept me from being ready for solid food. They say if you're hungry, you should grab a Snickers. But now I hunger and thirst for Christ and his righteousness. The good physician prescribed me a heart-healthy diet. So that means a diet rich in fiber and omega-3s. And now I can finally vitamin C that you are good for me. Like grandma's homegrown food, you are a whole meal. Those other men were just a snack. Empty calories of whispered sweet nothing, satisfying nothing. It was all just a waste. Clogging my heart and fattening my waist. Their sweetness that promised satisfaction is going to end up giving my heart an attack. But I guess that's the true characteristic of a snack. A snack is something that encourages you to cheat. Just one bite, the old temptation goes. The diet you've committed to won't have to know. But we know how that went with Adam and Eve. Just one bite from a forbidden tree. Appearing juicy and sweet, it looked good to eat. Eve gave the fruit to her mate and he ate. Then both were banished from the garden's gate. Adam bit off more than he could chew and found he was unable to swallow the truth. Too sickeningly sweet, it lodged in his throat. Now every man carries Adam's apple as a reminder, like a post-it note of the difference between being good and just looking good. And I confess, if you are a fruit, you definitely look good to the eye. But rather than try to turn you into an apple pie, I cherish your goodness as the Adam's apple of my eye. We now live in darkness because of the fall of Adam, but God promises a new morning after every eve. And as your partner and help me unto you, I would cleave, leaving the world behind because its sweetness is fake. I lay it all down on the altar for goodness sake, because you are good for me. And I know you will say, why do you call me good? For no one is good but the Father. But through the word we are cleansed and washed by the water, I've tasted and seen that the Lord's way is good, and I've witnessed and know you are washed in his blood. You are good for me. Like a bottle of spring water, hydration for a parched heart. You quenched a thirst I didn't even know I had. You are good for me. Like getting a full eight hours of sleep, I can rest in the safety of your arms, confident in your ability to protect me from harm. You are good for my character. Like obstacles were good for Joseph, like adversity was good for Esther, like struggle was good for Moses, like testing was good for David, and waiting waiting was good for Jacob. And if the roles were reversed, I would be Rachel waiting for you. I will continue to wait, for the time is not yet. I will wait, though it costs blood, tears, and sweat, for when God made man, he saw it was not good for man to be alone. So he created a woman from Adam's rib bone. Bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, the great mystery of how two souls join and mesh. Fourteen years I would happily wait for my truth holding out for a love story like Boaz and Ruth. This is no Cinderella drama or Disney story. Instead, let my heart be all to God's glory. I would trade my glass slipper to be the one who gets to wash your feet. With the oil of Proverbs 31, my lamp won't go out until you're respected in the city street. Submitting myself to the authority of Ephesians 5, to you, I would be your friend, your lover, and your wife because you are good for me. Allow me to be good to you.